Hi, my name is Rory and today I'm going to show you how to make a very basic, clean and simple showreel or actor's showreel using free software that's available on a Windows computer. So the two programs I'm going to use are Windows Movie Maker, which should have come with your machine. And I'm also going to use this program, which is called GIMP. It's a it's a raster image editing software. It's a similar program to Photoshop, sort of like Photoshop Lite, and it's an open source software, so it's completely free to use for whatever you want to do. And it can be used for editing headshots as well and things like that. It's, um, you know, it's not quite as powerful as Photoshop, but it's it can do most of what Photoshop needs to do, say about 90% of the jobs. So um, it's something that if you don't have Adobe Photoshop, it's worth the effort or worth the... Uh, time taking uh, to download. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head across to GIMP.org and download GIMP. And then you're also going to want to head over to 1001fonts.com and you're going to want to download a font from here. Uh, I find that the fonts that come with the uh, vanilla Windows install tend to be kind of bland and you can get sort of nicer ones from um, fonts uh, websites like this which provide, uh, well, thousands of free fonts. So I'd recommend choosing something serif, and these are some examples of serif fonts. And you can um, have a flick through them, see if any of them catch your eye. Something clean, simple, and uh, bold but nice looking would be good. Something along the lines of, uh, say, this Dodge font, for example. So click on that, and it'll bring you to the page, and then click download. And you're going to want to unzip the um, the font and you should unzip it into a folder where you have been gathering together all of the assets for your showreel. So I just have a folder on my desktop called showreel and in there you can see I have a headshot and I have two clips that I'm going to be using for the showreel as well. So drag the um, drag the font in there, the true type font, open it up and you should see something like this and then click install and it will install, it should be pretty quick and it'll install onto your computer so now you can use it in the various programs on your computer. And as you can see here, I have the headshot and uh, two clips. You can use as many clips as you want, but I'm just using two for demonstration purposes. So the next thing you're going to want to do is head over to a free music website, such as Incompetech, and uh, download something simple, uh, a nice uh, serene kind of background track. I'm going to go with this one called Music for Manatees. And this is just for playing underneath the title card and the end card just to give a bit more life to the opening and closing of your showreel. So uh, click on download for that and then you go, are going to want to take that into your um, showreel folder as well. So now that we have uh, the majority of our assets we just need to create our title plates and to do that we are going to launch GIMP. So uh, go start and then GIMP and the program will start to open up there. It might take a while to open up but uh, eventually you'll see a screen like this. And then what you're going to want to do is just click on File and New and you're going to be creating a new document. And we're going to work in 1080p which is a resolution with a width of 1920 and a height of 1080. And then just hit OK to open up your um, new document. And with the control button down you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out and you can hold down the mouse wheel to move your canvas around. The first thing we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to create our background. So a nice gradient should do for the background. Uh, so select a nice light grey colour for um, one of the colours, or a medium to dark grey and then a medium to light grey will be the two colours that I'm going to be using from here. And then select the gradient tool, um, which is the one that is uh, just hovering there, and drag a line from the top of your screen to the bottom and you'll create a gradient and you can also go from the bottom to the top to reverse the gradient or what you can also do is you can select radial gradient which is what I'm going to do and just click that and then draw it and you get a circular gradient like that. Now I'm going to actually reverse the colors for that just so we get it fading from light to dark rather than the other way around. The next thing you're going to want to do is just bring in your headshot. So click your and drag your headshot in and then minimize your folder again and then select the scale tool and you're going to want to use the scale tool to um, scale your image down and you hold down the control button to make sure that you scale uniformly so you don't skew the aspect ratio. So position and scale your headshot as you want and then just hit the scale button and that will scale it into position. And the next thing you're going to want to do is select your text tool and draw out a text box like so 
and then we are going to change the text color to white. Um, you can choose any color you want, but I think going for something clean and minimalistic means that a white font is possibly the best. Then you're going to want to type in the actor's name, which is your name, and then your phone number, and finally your email address. And with those highlighted, you can increase the size and also center it. I think just centering it makes it look that bit more aesthetically pleasing. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select our font, the Dodge font, which we downloaded. So click on the fonts button here and scroll up to wherever you have stored your particular font that you've chosen to use. For me, it's Dodge. So I'm just looking for that here. And there we have it. So that's it changed there. So I'm going to want to actually scale down the phone number and email address a little bit. And I'm going to put a space in between the name and the details so I can adjust the distance between those two lines and just do that like that. And finally, just increase the scale of the actor's name a bit until it looks the way you want it to look. And then once you are happy with it, select the move tool and just position your actor name, phone number and email as you like them. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put in an internal shadow on the text just to make it look that bit nicer. So select the select by color tool and click on the text, then select grow and grow the selection by one pixel. Then press select and invert and that will invert your selection. And finally go filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and you can choose any details you want, but the um, the settings which I've put in here give a nice, very subtle effect to your text. So it's 2, 2, 7, and 40. And remember to uncheck allow resizing, otherwise it'll mess up the aspect ratio of your image. So just click that and it will have created a nice, subtle in shadow on your text. And we are also going to add a drop shadow onto our photograph just to give it that little bit of a pop, just to lift it ever so slightly off the page. And I'm just going to use the same settings for that. So as you can see, that puts a very, very subtle shadow in under your image and just lifts it off that page just a little bit. So I'll show you before and after for the text and before and after for the image as well. As you can see, it's a subtle effect, but it does make a bit of a difference. So the next thing we're going to want to do is select our background layer and then choose from the menus, choose colors and colorize. And this tool allows you to change the color of your background. So you can go use the top slider to change the actual color, which is the hue, then change the saturation with the middle, middle slider, which is how vibrant or how um, black and white the image is. And then the bottom slider is the brightness. So it is how dark or how washed out your background is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a sort of gunmetal blue gray, which will match the eyes in the headshot and will also match the color of the top I'm wearing and the color of the scarf, just to kind of make it look a little bit synchronous and then just hit OK. And the final step that we have in GIMP is we're just going to save our file first of all, in case we choose to come back and edit it. So we're going to save as an XCF and save that into your showreel folder. So I'll just open that uh, there and save it as title.xcf. And then once we have that saved, we are going to want to select export and export it as a PNG. So export it the image as is, as title.png. And after you've done that, you're going to want to uh, turn off all the other layers and export a clean background plate. So to do that, click the I button beside the other layers and just go file and export again and export this as title two. And this will be a clean background plate that we can use in Movie Editor to just make the title look that little bit nicer and uh, that a little bit more eye catching. And that's us done with GIMP. So click quit and then discard changes and we can go into Windows Movie Maker. So with Windows Movie Maker open, 
what you're going to want to do is drag in your title to plate, which is going to be the first one that we bring in. And then following that, drag in your title plate. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have the um, images fade together. So first of all, change the duration of both images from seven seconds to two seconds. And then select from the animations page, the cross dissolve what with the uh, title, the second image highlighted, and you'll get a nice fade like that. Next, what you're going to want to do is select title two, which is the first plate and choose fade in from black and then select the title plate and choose fade out to black. And this is going to create our nice um, opening title like this, where it fades in, the details fade up, and then it all fades to black. And then the next thing we're going to want to do is drag in our first clip. And this may take a moment to um, be prepared by Windows Movie Maker, but when it's ready, you can go to edit and select the trim tool. And you can use the trim tool to select the section from whether it's a short or a monologue or whatever. You can use this with the two sliders at the either two ends to select the clip that you want to use in your showreel. Now spend a bit more time than I do with this because this is the important part. This is what you're showing off in the showreel. But I'm just going to select those and then click save trim. And that is our first clip added. And in visual effects, you're going to want to go and select multiple effects. And we're going to fade in and fade out to this. So we're going to select fade in from black and fade out from black, add them both, and then click apply. And that will give a nice fade in and a fade out. And we're also going to want to do the same with the audio, just so we don't have any jumps in the audio. This will mean that there's a nice smooth transition. So in the edit tab, choose the audio fade in and select medium and do the same with the audio fade out and you will have a nice smooth transition between your titles and your first clip. The next thing we're going to want to do is uh, this is optional now which is stick up a caption or a title over the clip. So you hit the caption button there and then you can type in the name of the scene. I'm just going to call this argument. Then highlight your text and choose your font. Now I'd recommend using the same font as before. So that Dodge font that I downloaded earlier. And um, we'll just select that now. And then increase the size of the text. And then just bring it over to the side of your window. So align it to the right or to the left, sorry, and then bring it over to the left. And you can choose two different um, animations for this. You can either choose the fade or you can choose the slide in from left. I wouldn't go with any of the other animations because honestly they're just not great. And uh, select the duration of four seconds for that. And uh, I'm going with fade so it fades in and it fades out just at the very start of the clip. It, it gives it just a second of the clip to play and then the title fades in. Next, we drag in our next clip and we're going to do the exact same thing again. So choose edit and choose the trim tool. And I'm just going to use the very end of this clip. So use the two little sliders again to select the image or the uh, section of the short film or clip or whatever that you're going to be using for your showreel and hit save trim. Next, what we're going to want to do is just copy across that title that we just made previously. And that is very simple. Just select the first one, hit copy and then paste. And you can just position that exactly where you want it on the next clip and uh, just double click on it or um, open up in text and highlight that to change the text. I'm going to call this brothers because it's an argument between two brothers and I already used argument and I'm going to change the font to black. Uh, it's just so that it stands out against the light background in this. Ideally, you might want to have them all the same color, but the most important thing is that they can be red. So there we have the two fading, um, the two fading titles of each of the two clips that we have in the section. Next, you're going to want to add in your multiple effects and choose fade in and fade out from black and add them both. And that will have our clip almost ready. And uh, don't forget, I think I did forget when I was recording this, but don't forget to also fade in and fade out the audio of your clip. 
And the last thing is uh, drag in our title card. And I'm going to leave that at the default seven seconds. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the fade in and the fade out from black again to the title card. So add them both. And that will be the visual side of our showreel finished. So it fades to black and then fades to our title again. So what we've done here is we've bookended the clips with your contact details and headshot. Next, we're going to bring in our background music. And I am going to adjust this because it doesn't start right at the beginning. So I'm going to use the start time or the start point, sorry, to adjust it so that the audio starts at the very start of my video. And I'm going to want to have that stop at just the very end of the title sequence. And then choose a fade out and choose medium. And what this will do is this will have the audio start, it'll play and then it'll fade gently into the background as it goes to the uh, clips of the acting. And next of all, we're going to want to do the same thing, but for the very end. So with this, you're going to want to put in a relatively high number just to get to the end of the clip and then adjust it so that you have your audio covering the last bit and you have the bit of the audio that you want. So you can move around with the mouse or with the start time to get that uh, set exactly as you want it. And then you just adjust the start point of your clip and just keep moving that up until you have the audio where you want it. And you can judge from the waveforms, um, which is the uh, little squiggly line. And you can judge from that where about in the song it is. And uh, you want it to be something like the end of the song where it starts to fade, as you can see where the line starts to get down there. So you want that to be at the end. But just to be on the safe side, you can also add a audio fade out. And uh, you want to have a fade in and a fade out for those. So um, I chose the fast one just because it's a very short clip. But again, that's all preference. You can choose that yourself. And then this is basically our showreel finished. So what we have is we have a nice title that looks simple enough and then it goes through. So finally, just export your file. And we're going to export it as showreel again into the showreel folder and using the uh, recommended settings for your clip. And this should export quickly enough. Now, it might be slow on some computers. It depends on how fast it is, because remember, we are at, um, rendering video here. So that can be a slow enough process on some machines. And then once that's done, that is your clip ready. So just uh, open the folder and you can double click on it to play it. And this is our clip. So it fades in, fades out. We have our first scene. The title comes up. I talk about something that is super important. Um, this guy is quite angry with me and uh, the scene goes on. I explain some things and then eventually what will happen is that it will fade out. And it should do that now. Any second now. And there we have it, a nice fade out and a fade into our next scene. And the same thing here, the title comes up, it goes away. Very clean, very subtle effect, but you, the eye is still drawn to it, so it reads the title without it being obtrusive. And then finally, our scene here will just fade out and our title card will fade in again. So that is the book ending of our two um, title cards. So the actor's name and contact details are on the clip. And that is basically how you make a simple showreel in um, Windows Movie Maker and the GIMP. So this is using entirely free software and it's a straightforward but simple, clean looking um, showreel because I think if you're not a professional editor, it's a better idea to work with something clean and basic than to try and go with fancy effects because um, things like filters, um, panning and zooming all look quite terrible most of the time. It takes a lot of skill to use them. So I would recommend going with something clean and simple like this. And if uh, if there's been any use, um, I hope it was helpful to you anyway. So uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, best of luck with your showreel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to finish now because this is a 20 minute clip. 
All right. All the best. Have a good day.